It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why black people around the world, and especially Africans, would not be mourning the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch. Queen Elizabeth passed away at 96 years old after reigning for 70 years. She became queen while visiting Kenya in 1952 after her father's passing. The British Empire is responsible for the colonization of dozens of countries and the death and suffering of millions of people around the world. Queen Elizabeth was the modern day face of that empire. However, she is also the face of a changed empire. Hi, my name is Jared and welcome to Black Excellence where we share interesting things in black culture and society in every episode. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified when we release new videos. It goes without saying that we are not celebrating the passing of the queen. We would not celebrate the death of anybody. The queen inherited a long-standing system and the royal family became symbolic a long time ago. So let's get to our top five reasons starting with the obvious. Number one, African colonization. The United Kingdom at one time controlled at least 17 countries in Africa, ruling 30% of Africans. During colonization, the British Empire enslaved Africans, controlled the wealth of those nations, and followed the good old motto, divide and conquer. In the early years, British traders brought weapons to Africa and exchanged them for raw materials and slaves. British colonization in Africa was not always a product of master plans executed by armies. Oftentimes, the empire was expanded using explorers, missionaries, and businessmen. The British suppressed uprisings against colonization in a brutal manner. In Kenya, for instance, the Mau Mau Rebellion broke out against British rule in the 1950s and was violently suppressed. That movement contributed to the independence of Kenya. Number two, the role in the slave trade. Britain officially got involved in the transatlantic slave trade with the approval of the royal family in 1663. Millions of enslaved Africans were transported to the Americas. Plenty of British politicians in the parliament had a business interest in the plantations, slave trading companies, and commodities like cotton and sugar. A portion of this wealth went into the preservation of the British royal family. Queen Elizabeth is believed to have been worth $500 million, but we're pretty sure it was a lot, lot more. The British justified slavery, claiming the enslaved Africans were barbaric savages who would acquire civilization on the plantations. Slavery was abolished by Britain through the Slavery Abolition Act in 1833. Number three, supporting African dictators and violently crushing uprisings. It is no secret that countries make alliances with other countries for military support. Even after several African countries gained their independence, the British Empire still had massive influence over those countries. That influence stretched even to countries that the British did not colonize, giving military support to dictatorships. Two examples of this is British's support to the Ethiopian government in the 1940s and to the Nigerian government in the 1960s. In Ethiopia, King Haile Selassie was facing an uprising from the Tigray province over taxation and self-rule questions. The Tigray rebellion was succeeding over the Ethiopian government until British Air Force got involved on behalf of the Ethiopian government and bombed several cities in Tigray. The rebellion was crushed and thousands of civilians were killed. A similar British involvement crushed the Biafra Rebellion in Nigeria in the 1960s. It is estimated that a million people died in the three-year civil war. So it is safe to say those who were victims of these dictatorships that received full British support are not fans of the royal family. Number four, Queen Elizabeth II never publicly apologized. Queen Elizabeth was the head of the British royal family for 70 years. In this time, the world went through a massive transformation. 10 African countries gained their independence under Queen Elizabeth, and an African American even became part of the royal family. So it is fair to assume the queen would finally make a public acknowledgement and apology for the monarchy's racist and violent past, but no such apology was ever publicly issued. Prince Charles, now King Charles III, however, has made several public speeches condemning the sins of the past, which his family was a part of. And for our last point, we turn to Black Twitter, which has been very vocal on the passing of Queen Elizabeth. 
Number five black Twitter is Team Princess Diana. The relationship of Queen Elizabeth and Princess Diana has long been a source of gossip and controversy. It is widely believed that Queen Elizabeth was cold towards the princess, who is loved and adorned globally. She was an outsider in the royal family and a compassionate philanthropist. The true story of the relationship between the two women was more complicated than popular opinion. There were good times, there were sour times, and everything in between. There is no doubt that Queen Elizabeth's legacy will face massive criticism for years to come. Let us know your opinion in the comments. That's it for this episode. We'll be back with another episode in black culture and society.